PEC will be fine pretty soon. Okay, let's go. We will talk about decoupling today. Decoupling, yeah, nice. Uh, because how to decouple your front end from the back end and why? And so I can do this my own. Actually, the biggest problem will be to pronounce your last name, but okay. Um, <laughs> so who we are? So next to me, there is uh, Anton, and uh, we are Wanderers. This is a Tesla from Wanderers uh, as well. We are working in Basel and Switzerland, and we will talk about front-end today. Okay, let me to make a brief overview of our talk today. Uh, first of all, we will make a short introduction uh, when we will talk about uh, Drupal and Fractal style guide. We will talk uh, closely about uh, Fractal theme for making style guide isolated from Drupal, and then we will talk about Drupal side. After that, we will uh, see a real demo project uh, with complete setup of Drupal and Fractal working together, and we will make some conclusion notes uh, to summer all them up. Let's go. Decoupling. The standard way of decoupling things is to separate front-end stuff and back-end via API interface. This allows to isolate front-end development and front-end system from back-end system and to communicate between them via API interface. But the bad thing about it Systems are decoupled, but people are not, because front-end developers still requires uh, to understand the backend of Drupal, uh, still requires to know its uh, theming engine, uh, because you know it's pretty hard to write a weak template without knowledge what's behind it and what data, what data will be in input to this thick template. So we will talk about the complete story uh, about decoupling on the backend side. Let's uh, think of backend as two layers. First layer is backend logic, where is uh, our data is stored and managed. And another layer on the backend side is a presentation layer, which is delegated to tweak. So let's consider that our backend is also split it in two independent parts. First is a logic and second is presentation thing. Why should we uh, think in such a way? Because it will simplify uh, the whole implementation process of our projects during design, during prototyping, development and so on. Because we can uh, work on presentation logic independently from business logic on our backend side. And here, uh, Living Style Guide will help us because it will allow us to work on design independently from Drupal. First of all, let me to uh, remember a uh, key thing behind all of this. This is atomic design thing uh, about uh, Componentization and splitting uh, the big interfaces in the smaller parts. But putting uh, things together can be really hard. Uh, like on this uh, real life example of uh, assembling a car vehicle, uh, we have a car body and we have uh, other car parts, and it's, uh, all of them are produced separately on different factories, probably. and. Uh, Sometimes it could be really hard to assemble a whole thing together, but we will try to do. Okay, let's now make a brief introduction of uh, Fractal Component Library. What is it, how we can use it, and later we will talk about how we can integrate this thing inside Drupal project. First of all, uh, a few words about Fractal itself. Fractal library uh, is a uh, tool running on Node.js server, which is completely independent from Drupal and uh, only requires Node.js environment. It can hold uh, all your styles, components, and patterns inside. It can help you to document uh, these things and uh, to build uh, page prototypes independently from Drupal. So 
uh, your front-end developer can just uh, use the single environment without any PHP knowledge and to, cre to create a complete website interface. Why to use Fractal? Because uh, Fractal tool is com gives you a complete freedom from uh, templating language. It's uh, template language agnostic. So uh, internally it just knows about components and where interfaces and you can use any templated language actually uh, which will render these components. The key thing is uh, the knowledge of components and where interfaces. Then you can integrate uh, this component library uh, inside any website. Actually, it doesn't matter uh, Drupal or another system. The thing is uh, to separate your style guide from your website engine completely and then integrate it back. Component-based uh, design, uh, of course, uh, driven by atomic design. Uh, we have components. Uh, we can create and maintain them separately, and then we can compose them inside system. Uh, the important thing here, how to preview our components, because component itself is just style and uh, template, probably bake it with some JavaScript logic, but uh, to be shown correctly, it requires some input, some data to be uh, inside it. Here we can hard code some uh, example data, or we can use the faker to generate the data automatically uh, in accordance uh, with uh, component interface, or we can even implement our, our, own, our own API calls, which will provide real life data to our component library. And of course, uh, the good thing about Fractal, uh, it can be run locally uh, on static server without any PHP backend and com complex uh, web server setup. And uh, finally, uh, we can customize its default theme so it will look uh, like our targeting uh, brand look and feel. And uh, it's created by a company, not by individual. That means that it uh, have a great support and maintenance and we can make sure we can use it and rely on it in our production projects. Okay, uh, enough uh, from introduction words. Let's see what is, what is it in the real life. Here is a, an example on official Fractal website, 24 ways, uh, which showing uh, on one side, the, uh, this is a public website where you can see the application of this component library. And on the other side, there is a special section in this uh, website showing you all the components registered in the system. You can easily navigate through them. You can show each of them separately and to give it some context. Uh, also, uh, the cool thing about Fractal, each component uh, has several features, you can uh, show its markup, you can uh, give it a context, uh, you could also give it a try uh, on different resolutions right inside this interface without any special tools. Here, here is uh, one of examples uh, of complex component and layout inside this component library. Uh, you can see how it's easy and uh, seamless to work and play with components. It can be used when uh, by developers, by front-end developers, by content managers, by designers. This is a real living style guide uh, which can be uh, maintained and accessed uh, by the whole team. This is another example of the same component not the same about the fractal. This is a component library for a different client. You can see that uh, this is a different set of components and different uh, theme giving you a unique uh, user experience and look and feel, but it's the same. Internally, it's the same system. It's uh, just a collection of components registered uh, in the system and completely independent from Drupal. Uh, until this point, we don't have Drupal uh, in any way. We don't have PHP. It's all uh, written and serving in Node.js server, a friendly environment for front-end developer, right? 
And here is some internal stuff, how to set up components inside the system. You can uh, read more about uh, fractal components uh, on the official website. But the cool thing, since uh, this system is completely template language agnostic, we can provide a tweak adapter to it, so we can use this system for managing components and uh, written and tweak. That's cool, because later we can use them in Drupal as this. Here is a one of example of a block quote component. And some internal setup, you can uh, see it later. Our talk is more about conceptual things and demo, and uh, setup is the next step if you, when you start working with it. And this is an example of a more complex component, uh, which uh, consists of uh, various uh, styles, data, and layouts. And you can see example folder structure here, how it can be stored inside. You can see CSS, CSS file with styles, a tweak template with a markup, config JSON, which will hold a component interface, and uh, some files on Drupal side. Here on the left, uh, you can see a configuration uh, which describes as uh, a component interface. It's required to let system know about your component, how to interact with it, how to provide data to it, and how to render it. Okay, uh, that's uh, a short uh, summary of fractal system. What is it, what is it can be used for? But uh, shortly, it's a component library totally independent from any backend uh, language, totally independent from Drupal, which uh, will make it easier to maintain, to adopt, and to learn for your front-end developers. Now let's look uh, inside Drupal and how we will use it in our Drupal site. Okay, thank you. Um, so just going back, uh, we just wanted to point out that you can also uh, dynamically add contents with uh, a node library called Faker, and uh, that's quite nice. And yeah, so why do we use, need to use Drupal in this case anyhow? Because uh, yeah, we kind of need to deliver content at some point and we also need to store content at some point as well as of course server-side business logic. Um, all this can be done with uh, frameworks like React, uh, et cetera. But uh, for us, Drupal is important. So, um, but what we, what we are not using Drupal for or trying to not use in the future is actually theming, sorry. <laughs> but uh, our, for me, working in this field for like the two, two last years, trying to, to decouple everything, I really highly recommend to uh, look at the Drupal uh, theming layer because all that has been done there is quite important and uh, I still search for better um, examples, and so in terms of accessibility as well as in building blocks, um, it really gives me, again, all the time, a very good feeling. So. Let me make a mm -hmm. short note. A really short note about uh, this stuff is that Drupal 8 make a significant step forward uh, in this area because in Drupal 7, the markup and styles were encapsulated in Drupal and it was really hard to separate them. But for starting from Drupal 8, uh, it's separated from the ground, and now we can completely forget about styling and theming in Drupal. We can uh, delegate the content management function to it and uh, move our styling and theming process outside of Drupal. That's now possible, and uh, that's pretty easy to do with Drupal 8. You're completely right on this point. So um, let's see how to integrate it. In the end, uh, the little teaser on the bottom, if you can spot it already. So first of all, uh, we need the uh, component library and Drupal 8, which is a very nice module that allows you to put your themes somewhere else than into the theme uh, theme folder, theme, com theme template folder. Sorry, that's the right word. So. Uh, in Drupal, you have the add my theme uh, shortage or uh, allies. The same you have with your modules and so on uh, with every theme. And to um, broaden this, you can use the uh, component library. Next, there is the twi uh, twig field value library uh, module, which we will see later why we need to use this uh, because handing over values is kind of 
problematic in Drupal, or it is problematic in Drupal due to a very important reason, caching. And yeah, and then we need, just need to tell Fractal uh, instead of handlebars, instead of nunchucks, instead of whatever templating language. I like, I like Pug, actually. <laughs> um, please use Twig. And uh, we wrote a little adapter for a, a Drupal-flavored Twig thing so that you can use uh, certain things, but n uh, not important at this point. So in, if you want to install it, it's down below. So uh, the basic idea of uh, this uh, is called the host template pattern. Uh, which is not ideal, but it works. So in the end, uh, we have my theme in the themes custom folder. Uh, we have our normal templates folder, and there we have a page or um, a node whatsoever. And this node should incorporate a certain component. In this case, the box twig template. Um, inside the uh, my theme info.yaml to actually enable um, the new folder to discover the new folder that's called components. And yeah, it's components, 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 all over. Um, you can rename it as you, as you like. Um, in the uh, box twig file, you actually just set up what you want to have. So the basic example would be having a link. It's very basic, I know. But the link consists of two uh, variables, having a URL as well as the actual content. And then the actual template, in this case the page HTML twig file, um, would include from this components alias box box twig with the given um, variables, uh, content field link URL and uh, content field link text. Let me make one note. Please. One uh, note more about this, about this host template pattern. Uh, from one point of view, this is a drawback uh, because it, it requires you to write this include uh, sentence each new time when you want to use a component from your style guide library. But on the other side, this can be advantage because you can reuse the same uh, component from your style guide into different components for Drupal. So you can have two systems. One is uh, components for your style guide, style components, and which is served for, by Fractal completely. And another one is uh, Drupal components, which is served by Drupal. And uh, using this uh, simple includes, uh, you can make kind of bridge between them. So we couldn't be completely different set of components on Drupal and uh, on Fractal. And you can uh, do everything you want, like here. Uh, for Drupal, this is a page component with its own template. But for style, this is a box uh, component, which is different, but we can use it right here. Mm -hmm. And as I just said, it's the host template pattern. We just called it that way because it's like grabbing. Uh, it's not ideal, but it helps to be uh, quick stable. And um, again, let's have a look. You really have to decide how you go with your uh, CSS files, with your JavaScript files. So in this case, we use a SCSS file that's going to be magically included somehow. Uh, don't ask. And um, yeah, but the, the example I gave before was a little bit different. And uh, to be a little bit more realistic, we actually have to look at the uh, handing over the values with the phone fi uh, field, for example, the emails field. And there I put the uh, field value pipe field value, um, that's a filter, I believe the right term would be. Uh, instead of using, for example, uh, uh, handing over the, the name as label um, brackets, items, and get string. Uh, this kind of makes a difference. Um, so I'm just slowly, uh, uh, fastly going into this, because if you would kint the values, uh, then so the first one, uh, so kint name items get string would directly give you your string. What's the problem about this? Uh, the problem would be that there's no caching attached. So uh, we need actually this uh, pipe field value to initialize the, render, uh, the rendering. And if you really, really, really need to do this, you actually need to trigger the render for this very field in, in, in this situation. It's not the problem of the name or a single string field. It's more the problem of having um, related entities. If those entities change in the cache uh, and in this ver very particular situation, the cache would not change uh, and would not be invalidated. 
So this uh, module is quite nice and it gives you the uh, nice warning I just gave you there. So you have to do this uh, twig image ren pipe render on your field if you're doing something like that, whether or not. So, um, and now I wanted to go over with you a uh, demo project we um, developed so far. Um, it's not the whole deal, of course, but it uh, shows nicely where to go. And uh, so we have this nice website that is so fantastically designed. It has a homepage, has a uh, view on the very, uh, very homepage showing um, three different news items in the view mode teaser. And uh, of course, it has a very important forms because the web is all about interaction. And so we can see uh, all the form items that are kind of possible. Um, we've got a 404, which kind of says no. And of course, we have our new news overview page that gives you a list of uh, news items. And if we click on a, a certain item, we have a very well-designed uh, header image as well as an awesome gallery and we could put in some text here. Sorry for not doing the text. Uh, what would this look like in the style guide? Um, the thing is, uh, I just showed you the website, so you have an idea what's the final product and uh, doing um, a living style guide actually <laughs> puts me always in an awkward position, I start with the small things. I start with the atoms. And I was saying, oh, that's a nice button. And your client's gonna, not going to be impressed by little buttons and by a <laughs> nice uh, breadcrumb or whatsoever. They want to see the whole page. And that's the reason uh, I tend to show a living style guide backwards. And um, for this, it's not the whole thing. But uh, for example, if we go for... Um, a simple page that consists of text, having a text image uh, paragraph as well as a news stripe, we could think of having like this composition. This could also make the whole page. And you could also go and have a look at the whole page independently and uh, see what it, uh, what it looks like. And um, as well as the form, uh, which in this case looks a little bit different, but uh, it does not matter because the form needs to be adjusted to whatever container it lives in. Lives in. And um, yes, and then uh, the, actually the most important thing for us is to start with typography. And here we styled all the important things that are actually atoms, smaller components, so to speak. And this is something you could actually show the client saying, okay, I put a nice uh, mood area, a header above it, and I pu put also the uh, breadcrumb as well as the main navigation above it, put slap the footer below, and boom, we have a website. And so the client slowly understands, ah, I can do th like this um, block quote, and I can show, do lists, and I can situate images, and I have a table, and of course, different levels of headlines. And um, so if we start the other way around, saying, OK, we need to define the colors of the project. So we just link, uh, show them. Uh, we need to at least show the icons of the project. And um, so we slowly start over with having all the paragraphs and the lists and the links. And somewhere should be the buttons. Yes, the default button. Yeah, that's it's so impressive. That's the reason why I showed you the other way around. And, but these are all small items, and actually th those items you don't actually reuse, you just use, because what is a button? In this situation, a button is only a class to a link or a button tag. And um, so, again, there's also the next problem of having grids. So I could have rows, and I can also have certain columns. They're not very impressive. Um, doing this is like just colors. Yes, that's the reason we actually need to separate the very big things from the very small things. And at some point, we realized the in-between are the things we are actually uh, interested in. So I could have a news teaser that only consists of the name of the author and, as well as the title. And maybe I can also have a Drupal speak view mode uh, being a full news teaser. And as you realize, this full news teaser is as with as the uh, 
the, cur uh, the, the current window. And as well as an image item, it's only an image uh, form, so we will skip. And then we can slowly go a little bit bigger, saying that we have a news wall, which then would consist of a grid, we already seen that, uh, a grid of uh, certain news items, we've seen that, the grid then holds the news items in its width, and we can reuse this whole thing. And uh, if we have a look down below, we can also see that uh, we just iterate over the um, uh, pattern of the news item, temp, uh, view mode, full news teaser. And again, naming is the big, biggest challenge here. And uh, yeah, what's more important is if we start off with having some uh, JavaScript in there. So as we've seen in the other, th uh, other demo, uh, which was going through, there was like a uh, navigation pulling off and so, so JavaScript having in there is also very important. So if I would have a uh, image gallery, if this would work, load, I think the fourth did work. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, there it comes. It takes some time. Um, I can actually, I think this was with full screen. No? Oh, okay, not. Um, you would need to have a JavaScript being independently run there in there as well and working in there as well. And um, <laughs> and something like breadcrumbs makes you startle a little bit. And um, I will explain in a short second why. So just have a look at the actual code that is going on there. So a little bit repeatedly uh, repeated as we just saw. Uh, we name it that way, so it does not need to be like this. So we, but we came up with the idea just slamming everything inside one folder does not do the trick. Because as I just said, we've got the perceptual patterns. So block quote, buttons, colors, and all that stuff. Colors just needs to be a uh, description in Fractal saying, okay, that are my colors. Uh, ideally, you would add in there a, a, a CSS file saying um, that are my colors and please reuse them. Buttons can be a little bit more complex because we can use mixins to change colors and then finally incorporate them. Uh, but again, buttons is just a small twig template. And um, yeah, so that are actually the things that are we could reuse in every project. So every company probably will have their own perceptual patterns. And if if you're good and uh, ver uh, variableize, no, that's another word. If you put variables on all of this, um, you would be able to reuse in a project and uh, just style it as you like. So layout pattern, again, that's something we reuse and we like to use one kind of grid and so we re reuse this grid, but in the end we end up with maybe the same classes saying no, in this situation not, saying rows, columns, for example, uh, if you tend to uh, follow the the way of, uh, of uh, foundation. Um, but here it gets interesting. So the functional patterns, as I just said, that are the actual reusable elements we, uh, we came up with. And we named them bricks, departments, floors, and footer because uh, we have a quite uh, eloquent colleague. He came up with this idea and From yeah, why not? From constructions and it kind of kind of works for us. So uh, one, once again, we had the teaser. As you remember, the teaser is just uh, plain uh, CSS and the uh, teaser news may look the very same in the uh, code itself. And it uses a modifier in this case to have a big or uh, it uses the teaser view modifier to show a small or a simple or a full view. You can do this with two different twig templates. You can put this inside one template. This will change how you would try to reuse it. There are certain ways of doing this. Yeah. This, is, this is exactly what we are trying to achieve. This, is, this template uh, has been initially uh, stored inside Drupal folder, right? And now, we are going to separate uh, such logic, such presentation logic to the separate system, to the style guide. And then in Drupal, we can just include this thing without uh, knowledge of its internal presentation. Mm -hmm. And if we go a little bit bigger, we saw the uh, list of 
uh, uh, saw the news wall, and inside the news wall we saw the include, and that's that's the fun thing at this point. So this include actually is able to work in fractal as well as in Drupal. So um, just uh, think away the wall template concatenation back in there. That's not important. So you just have one um, one route to your template file. This route is relative, but it works relatively in fractal as well as in Drupal. And that's the reason why you can reuse the elements. And if you are able to actually iterate over those elements, you actually can reuse those elements in both of them. And uh, yeah, the most important thing, um, ah, I did not do this slider, is um, how to actually put all the, the assets in there. Um, so that's also something we, uh, We'll discuss later. Um, but the most important thing is, of course, we need to have JavaScript in there. And having actually the Drupal behavior uh, style actually works out for us. So um, in this uh, fractal uh, style guide, we actually only include the Drupal JS, which nothing else uh, does nothing else than iterate over the Drupal behaviors object and then just fires every function that's there, the attach function that's there. Shoot me if I'm saying something wrong. And uh, this can be done in Fractal as well or in whatever uh, JavaScript uh, thing. So we can actually have the uh, JavaScript running inside the Fractal uh, style guide as well as in Drupal and dr reuse the JavaScript. Hey. And uh, yeah, and so the rest is actually at this point. Um, it would be nice, and you can do this. Uh, we, have, we have done this in the other project. Uh, is lots of mocking and that's the reason you would normally try to reuse your components and to mock those components that you can actually reuse those components and don't copy over uh, the whole HTML. Fine. Uh, going back. So the real life challenges we face uh, faced so far and that's really real life challenges. Okay. Um, of course, there are problems, and those problems can be solved, and you just need to address them. That's the thing I am trying to do at the moment. So, uh, we said we want to be decoupled, but what's real life? Real life is that the backend actually is defined. So, when your company goes for Drupal, it goes for, may I say a bad word, typo three. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> It rarely changes, but of course there are situations uh, we are not all, uh, fully uh, going for Drupal, but other component JavaScript libraries and so on, we can use this there as well. So, and of course we have to organize ourselves in the local domain, and this highly depends on the team. So, we, ca uh, we came up with the idea of bricks, departments and floors, not to the fact that we are so eloquent and fancy, but uh, we realized, for example, we took heavy use of uh, paragraphs, uh, talking with a front-ender about paragraphs and that we want to have a paragraph there and this paragraph should have an image. No, it's a paragraph. It should have like something else or is it just text? A normal text is like a block quote, right? And a block quote paragraph, you have a block quote paragraph. So you're mixing up words all the, all the way. It is um, very important that you know what you're talking about and at that point you actually need to find your own language as well as Drupal has, of course, complex modules like views, breadcrumbs, and navigation, and we ha ha <laughs> need to mock them. So, uh, as I just showed you, actually uh, mocking breadcrumbs or incorporating breadcrumbs is quite uh, complex. Uh, it, it's just a list, you know, so it's more easy to just copy and paste uh, the, the list into your template fold files instead of using Faker, trying to iterate over an object uh, to, to randomize the, uh, the items and to randomize uh, the contents and then see that uh, your actual wrapper is, ha has the right class and so on and all that stuff. So navigation, we actually mock at this point for Fractal. But you could also use an API doing this, but then this API needs to be there. So we came up with the uh, three extremes I was mentioning before. So we actually have our reusable uh, components which uh, live in more or less the middle of the thing. So we have the elements that are for your site it's too small, uh, as I uh, was uh, saying. So actual paragraphs, actual block quotes, actual blocks, and so on. You don't 
reuse, you don't incorporate those as Twig templates. You just use them, give them a class, and use this class. And on the other hand, you got these two big complex uh, things, uh, like for example, views, and uh, going uh, more and more bigger. Those you probably mock, and those are more um, important to the client than to you in the end. Because if you have a whole picture of the website, and this is where you go. You can think about it a little bit uh, in the other way. So going for a CSS framework that kind of defines you what your, uh, your links and your blocks look like. And uh, on the other hand, you have your documentation of the whole project and see what's the demo page. So if you're paid to do a demo page even before launch, it's fine to do that in there. And you can uh, mix in text that's totally random and the client would realize, hey, I thought our real text life example would not work, but now it does. Okay, uh, so we are still searching for the right uh, solution, but for, uh, there is UI patterns, and I highly recommend to check this out. Because the next step is to actually get rid of this host template pattern. So what we wanted to show you today was the uh, actual usage, usage of uh, Fractal, as well uh, using it in Drupal, and Drupal being a content delivery thingy. <laughs> yes. Um, so, and the, the actual idea is to make it the compound folder, so Fractal calls this folders compounds, and it's sometimes good to have different names for that, as independent as possible and as self-explaining as possible. So think about uh, dependency management. This needs to be there for those compounds as well. but it needs to be there for Drupal to understand. So uh, it needs to be there that I can uh, target the JavaScript file. I can target the, the SVG file in there. there this also need, needs to be a, a solution for that, as well as the CSS file, when I need it and only then. And of course, there's more. So when you're thinking about front end and you at some point have to make a decision between HTTP2 and HTTP1, short form H2, H1, um, which gives you also a performance uh, insight to this thing. And I just learned that HTTP 1 can be also a very good performance thing as well. And as I just mentioned, how to include your CSS, um, it can be also good to have your compound, so, so your component, to actually inline your CSS with a link statement just above the component and not let Drupal do all that stuff, versus a I put everything together and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, compile it and just serve this one. And of course, JavaScript inclusion, uh, it may be uh, framework agnostic, so it would be nice to not only use Drupal behaviors there, but something else. There is probably a solution for that, but yeah. And so why should we use it? Why to use uh, Living Style Gate? It can simplify uh, real life uh, while building the project uh, during the whole stages because you can work on design uh, independently from Drupal. Uh, you can create uh, various pages like Tassilo shown us uh, recently. So we can build almost the whole website actually without any Drupal. We can show with the client, we can get feedback early, we can make several iterations before we go to Drupal. It will save us a time, resources, and it will give us more flexibility because uh, it's completely independent and it doesn't require any additional technologies. It's only Node.js server and that's it. As a result, uh, uh, this leads to better communication with clients uh, because we can identify the problems in design early. We can identify problems in content relation probably uh, as well early and uh, to react early as well. So the whole communication between uh, uh, us and client during the development process will be more smooth and clear and will be more fun because you know, you can even make small changes in the design right in Fractal, uh, right in near the client, sitting near with you, for example. Of course, this uh, would be more hard to do with Drupal because uh, it's a more complex system and it requires more knowledge. Uh, and uh, as uh, we already said uh, earlier, uh, it can be used not only for front-end development and for communication with clients. 
It also can be used for by designers as a uh, style guide, uh, as a content manager, so we can see what uh, we can do and how we can lay out our content from page to page. So it's kind of a visual language between the whole team and uh, between team and client. And uh, one uh, important thing uh, about uh, this separation, uh, it simplifies the way how we can test and maintain, maintain our responsive design. Because uh, uh, just imagine if you have a complex Drupal setup with a bunch of templates and CSS and JavaScript and so on, and uh, you can just uh, save a lot of time uh, for changes and uh, for preview of these changes to the design because when you change in the templates, when you change in the JavaScript or styles, you actually doesn't cha don't change uh, any content in Drupal. So Drupal uh, represents a component library in some way. So the separation between content storage system and style guide system uh, is great and it help us to maintain responsive design and to save time to verify our changes in the real life. Of course, we can use uh, this while prototyping and during the development process as well. And on ongoing maintenance of active project, of course. That leads us to the next uh, sentence that uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a false meaning that we can design the whole project once and when reuse uh, the existing design until production. It just doesn't work because uh, we should be flexible enough, we should be agile, uh, especially when we are designing multi-page uh, website with various templates and layouts and we need to be able to apply changes quickly. Not just to code, but to design, because uh, sometimes when it uh, came to real life, we can see that our design just doesn't work in this case, and we should reconsider it again. Tassel, I hope you can... Yeah, the point, the point is, uh, yeah, we showed how to use it in Drupal, but in the end, uh, if we would like to have a, another component, so say for example we put another Angular component on the website that needs to look alike, uh, something we have in the website there as well. We can put it in there and we can reuse the components there. Just as we have seen with the uh, Novartis website. Actually, um, this is a um, so-called uh, living style guide for uh, up to Drupal 7, 8, a Type 3 language, as well as a uh, completely independent uh, framework they reuse. And so you can build something that is totally framework ag agnostic. And this would be, this is also a very good uh, takeaway. And of course, you can take it for your next project. As I said, you start building your components to be re reusable in the next project. So our personal lessons learned in decoupling is, first of all, uh, the CMS still demands uh, some difference from the front end. Uh, so actually in Drupal, I really like, and it's important to me to get to the content, so the quick edit or the uh, other backing functionalities need to be addressed nevertheless, and you have to uh, face them as well. And sometimes there needs to be additional container, but right now Drupal is very, very flexible in this theming thing, as well as accessibility topics most, are mostly addressed by uh, the content management system and brings the front end back to earth. And uh, yeah, so that's also something we really need to focus on. And uh, yeah, the CMS structures for front end code. So um, it is, very important to have a um, common understanding of, in this case, Drupal speak. I just mentioned the example of uh, paragraphs, which is a module name, but kind of differentiates uh, to normal uh, front end or HTML structure. But uh, having a block, having a view, uh, understanding what a node is to be something coming up again and again, that's something that really is a good content structure coming from Drupal. And not everybody needs to understand it right away, so think about that. And view modes, of course, is also a very, very um, 
important thing for frontenders to understand that they need to limit their sel themselves for the content and to imagine that content may reoccur. And yeah, and as I just said, frontend is never as independent as implied. So always keep in mind the application layer. And of course, maintenance will mess up things. That's the reason we actually changed to Fractal. Uh, having something like KSS, uh, so where you um, uh, document your uh, actual styling inside the uh, CSS code, SCSS code, is kind of cumbersome. And um, yeah, probably you will no, that's not. Uh, you will, and this will get outdated. So make yourself an outsourced documentation saying, in the end, saying, okay, if we use a, a building system with grids, for example, uh, stick to the naming conventions of block and rows, for example. You can uh, think of buttons always being buttons, but not call them BTN in one, uh, uh, in one project and call them bottom or whatever in the other. And uh, yeah, try to minimize the additional information around the component, make it self-explaining, and of course keep discipline. That's yeah. And I learned this from a last project. <laughs> Doing this alone is really sucks. It, it it is not worth it. So it's a team workflow. Uh, if, if you really try to do this alone, don't do it. Uh, you're so much faster, you are so much more structured and you would understand your project as well and everybody else will understand your project much more faster than doing this with a, a living style guide. So it's too complex and it's not a low hanging fruit. For us it takes more than, uh, I don't know, at the moment like five projects to slowly adapt and realize what quirks are there. And um, yeah, so it really is. So going further means uh, that you all are interested in, of course, UI patterns and this talk is today. And uh, there's also in lots of other topics uh, regarding decoupling Drupal. Uh, those slides are at slides.com. And of course, you need to contribute to our sprints and please help us to get better and better. If I'm to jump you on, on stage, please tell me so. <laughs> and thank you very much. We are help, happy to have you, and we're now open for questions. <laughs>